Welcome to question 4 of the 2006 Mathematical Methods Exam 1. In this video we will be looking at the solution and examination advice for this question. A reminder that this video is in no way endorsed by VCAR. For question 4 we have the function f with a domain of negative pi to pi both included with a rule f of x equals 5 cos of 2x plus pi on 3. For part A, we're asked to write down the amplitude and period for the function. So for the amplitude, we need to inspect this value here. And the amplitude is simply that value, ignoring the sign if it's negative. So for this, we have that the amplitude is equal to 5. The period can be found by looking at this value here, which we might call n, so n equals 2. And we use the formula that the period is equal to 2 pi divided by that n value. So the n is simply the value that multiplies x in our equation. Therefore, the period of this graph is going to equal 2 pi divided by 2, which simply equals pi. So for part A, we have the amplitude equals 5, and the period equals pi. From the examiner's report, we can see around 80% of students receive full marks for this question. And the comment was that it was handled very well, which was expected of students at this level. The most common error was stating that the period was 2 pi rather than pi. For part B, we're asked to sketch the graph of the function f on the set of axes below. Label axes intercepts with coordinates and label endpoints of the graph with coordinates as well. To start with, we're going to find the y-intercept of this graph, which is done by letting x equal 0 in the equation. Therefore, y is equal to 5 cos of 2 bracket 0 plus pi on 3. So therefore, y is equal to 5 times cos of 2 pi on 3. And we know the exact value for cos of 2 pi on 3 is negative a half. So this gives negative 5 on 2 as the y-intercept. So we can now put that point on the graph. And because the period of the graph we found before was pi, when we go to x equals pi, we'll get the same y value. And when we go to x equals negative pi, we'll also have the same y value. And because the domain has square brackets for our endpoints, these dots need to be colored in. Next, we need to find the x-intercepts of the graph. And they occur when y equals zero in the rule. Therefore, we want to solve the equation five cos of two x plus pi on 3 is equal to 0. And now to get cosine to equal 0, we need the part inside. So that is we need 2 bracket x plus pi on 3 to equal pi on 2 or 3 pi on 2 for one revolution around the unit circle. Therefore, to get rid of this 2 that's currently multiplying, we can divide both sides by 2, which is the same as multiplying by a half, which gives x plus pi on 3 is going to equal pi on 4 and 3 pi on 4. Now, to be able to subtract these, we need to get a common denominator. So therefore, we have x plus 4 pi on 12 is equal to 3 pi on 12 and 9 pi on 12. Now, subtracting 4 pi on 12 from all of those terms, and we find x equals negative pi on 12 and 5 pi on 12. So they are two of the x-intercepts we're after, but because there's two periods worth of the graph, there's two more that we need to find. So if we mark the first two we know on, we know that this is negative pi on 12, and then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi on 12 is here. And we know that the x-intercepts are going to occur a period apart. So if we take negative pi on 12 and add pi, we get to 11 pi on 12. And if we have 5 pi on 12 and we subtract pi, we get back to negative 7 pi on 12. So that's negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pi on 12 is just here. And now we're very close to graphing this, but we just need to consider what this has done to the graph. So this x plus pi on 3 has translated the graph 
pi on 3 units in the negative x direction. So that is, it's going to send the graph this way. So where there would have been a maximum value at 0, 0,5, it, it's now going to be pi on 3 in this direction. So if our maximum value is here, we're going to have a minimum value down here at negative 5. We're also going to have a minimum value down here and another maximum value up here, just to help when we sketch the graph. So now we can join these points with a smooth symmetric curve, and that is the graph of f of x. So the last thing we can do is label the axial intercepts and endpoints. So this point here was negative pi comma negative five on two. This was zero comma negative five on two and this was positive pi comma negative five on two. And our x intercepts were at negative seven pi on 12 comma zero, at negative pi on 12 comma zero, at five pi on 12 comma zero, and at 11 pi on 12 comma zero. So that is the full graph of f, and we didn't need to label the maximum and minimum points for this particular graph. So from the examiner's report, we can see that only 14% of students received full marks for this, and that many students had difficulty sketching the graph and including the required information in the correct form. So that is as coordinates and as exact values. It was disappointing to see the number of graphs that were either not smooth nor symmetric. Many students did not realise that the amplitude and period found in part A should be used for this graph, and although most graphs had an amplitude of 5, the period of pi was rarely seen. Endpoints were generally located correctly, but rarely labelled, and the x-intercepts were often incorrect and not written as coordinates. The y-intercept was often ignored, and the graphs sometimes did not cover the entire domain. A few students also attempted to find the turning points, even though it was not asked for for this question. And just reproduced below is the exact graph that you should have seen generated by a computer.